Greetings fellow gorehounds and welcome back to another blood splattered vlog. So recently we acquired some new lights for our shooting setup, so I am testing out those lights right now with this video, so if the lighting's a little weird, I apologize. Anyway, with that all said, let us talk about this week's movie, I Remember You, an Icelandic horror film that recently hit Netflix, that I knew absolutely nothing about before I watched, and actually did enjoy quite a lot, but with a few caveats. But before we get into those caveats, allow me to explain what this movie's about for those who have no idea. So I Remember You is essentially about this one missing persons case in which this doctor's kid went missing three years ago. Apparently the kid was playing hide and seek and then he went to go hide but then no one ever found him afterwards. And he was apparently last seen at this one gas station but they don't know where he was going when he went to that gas station. And over the course of the last three years the case has gone cold and all the leads have dried up. That is until one day the doctor is called onto a crime scene because he is a crime scene consultant for the police. And it's this apparent suicide inside this one small church in the middle of nowhere. And while this one detective and the doctor start investigating this suicide, it ends up unraveling a whole bunch of mysteries, not the least of which being his missing kid. But as to how that all comes about, I'm going to leave that for the spoiler section because that's hardcore spoilers. But needless to say, with just that little description, you're probably going to understand my first caveat with this movie, and that's that this movie is extremely convoluted. It's got all these mysteries and pieces that are all intricately woven, and eventually all is revealed by the end of it. But the journey leading up to that conclusion can be extremely confusing at times just because of how much is going on. It's a lot to keep up with, and I'm not entirely sure if its confusing nature and its convolution is a result of something being lost in translation, or if it really is just an extremely confusing and convoluted movie. That being said, the movie does tie up in a way that is somewhat satisfying, though it does leave a lot of questions. Questions that might make you lead to poking holes in the rest of the movie, so be warned about that. Everyone in this film gives fantastic performances, and you really find yourself feeling for the doctor over the course of this movie. Just every time something happens that reminds him of his kid, and reminds him of the futility of his search for his kid, it just really pulled my heartstrings. This poor dude has been searching for his kid for three years, and he's pretty sure that the kid is not alive because the kid was a diabetic. So unless someone kidnapped him and has been giving him insulin, the kid is not going to survive on his own. There's no way. The kid was probably dead months ago. Nay, the kid was probably dead within the first year. And every time that starts to sink in a little more over the course of the movie, just, oh man, you just start to tear up. Like, it's hardcore. It's like a movie almost entirely composed of scenes like that one from Mystic River in which Sean Penn is screaming, Is that my daughter over there? Though I will admit, in this movie, it's a lot more subtle than that. It's not, like, super melodramatic like that scene is. But the feeling of that scene gives you a really good idea of what you feel in this movie a lot. And the other thing I really liked about this movie is that even though I was confused many times over the course of this movie, I was thoroughly engaged in the mystery as a whole. I wanted to see how each piece was going to tie together and how each plot thread was going to collide. With each piece of the puzzle peeled, I wanted to know what the next layer was going to be. My other caveat with this movie, however, is I'm not exactly sure why it's called I Remember You. I mean, I think I have a general idea of why it's called that. There is a lot of memories in this movie, but I don't know. That absolutely might be something that's lost in translation because its original title was in Icelandic and I don't know how to pronounce that title. And for all I know, that title might be completely different from this one. So take my complaint there with a grain of salt because I have no idea. Anyway, despite being confused quite a few times over the course of this movie, I did enjoy I Remember You, and I would recommend it to people who like themselves a good mystery, as well as people who enjoy themselves a good foreign language thriller. And I don't know about the rest of you, but I haven't seen many Icelandic films over the course of my lifetime, so that's a novelty within itself. So check out the movie if you so wish. It is currently available on Netflix at this moment in time, so it is the perfect time to check it out. And with that said, I'm going to include some sort of Amazon affiliate link in the description below. I do not know what the link is going to be to, but it's going to be to something that is awesome. Or maybe it'll be just a link to the movie itself, because I do not know if it's available on Amazon. But if it is, I'll put it there. And if you click that link and buy or rent something with that link, I will get a kickback from it. And with all that said, my fellow gorehounds, let us finally move on to the spoilers. And because this movie is so convoluted, I'm not going to go plot point by plot point like I sometimes do with these reviews. I'm going to talk a little bit more vaguely because Jesus Christ does a lot happen in this movie. Alrighty then, so everything I told you in the pre-spoiler section about the doctor, the suicide, the missing kid, yada yada yada, that is essentially plot A. Because as it turns out, there's a plot B in this movie in which this couple and their best friend are going to this abandoned town in the middle of Iceland. 
and their goal is to renovate one of the houses in the town and turn the town into a tourist resort. But unfortunately, this town is on an island, so in order to get to it, they need to take a ferry. And the ferry is very weather pending, so it's not always available, and on top of that, there's not really good cell service on this island. So as you can imagine, when spooky shit starts happening on this island, and I do mean spooky shit like seeing ghosts, or at least you think it's ghosts, it might just be something that's there, which I'll go into that part later in this review because that is hardcore spoilers. That means there's no immediate way for these people to get off this island and get to safety. And one of the big extra mysteries in this movie is this entire time you're watching this plot thread and the Doctor plot thread is you're wondering what these two have to do with one another. Well, I mean, you start to get some connections because one of the ghosts they end up seeing on the island is this kid, but you're not sure if it's the missing kid or this other kid. Because over the course of this Doctor storyline, they end up finding that there's all these old people who have been dying of either suicide or natural causes, or at least they think they're natural causes, but they might not be. But all these people who have died recently all have connection in that they all went to this one school. And lo and behold, it was a church school. An extremely abusive church school, and on top of that, one of the kids that went to this school was being abused by his dad. And even though everyone was being abused at this school, all the victims, all the people that had been dying later in life in succession, when they were kids, they also bullied the kid that was also being abused by his dad. And it turns out that this kid also went missing after playing a game of hide and seek. Now, I'm not sure if I'm getting all those details correctly, because this movie was really confusing to me in this aspect. So if you are familiar with this movie, feel free to correct me in the comment section below, because I freely admit that this movie lost me a few times. Not so much lost my attention as much as lost my actual ability to understand what was going on. And like I said, I'm not sure if it's because the movie was convoluted or if because things were lost in translation. But anyway, the point is, that was my understanding of what went down in the past. And now all those kids are grown up, and they're all dying one by one. So the question becomes, this weird spooky ghost kid that this other plotline is showing us, is that the missing kid that the doctor lost, or is that the missing kid from the past past? And I think the truth is, it's a little column A and column B, and it just depends on what they're wearing to signify which one it is. So maybe if I watch the movie over again, I would have a really good indication of which one was which. But yeah, that's one of the other mysteries in the movie, on top of a million mysteries. So anyway, on top of this couple and their best friend on this island seeing these spooky ghosts, the Doctor also starts to see the ghost of his kid guiding him throughout this journey and this mystery. And you're not quite sure if he's hallucinating his kid or if it's even his kid at all? Because again, it could be this other kid? And this other kid is potentially dangerous if he's killing all these people that bullied him? And one of the things that the old ghost is doing is that it's leaving these cross marks on all the backs of the victims of the people he's killing. And the reason he's leaving these crosses on his victims is because those are the crosses that were left on his back from his dad. So there's another mystery here, is he being possessed by the ghost of his dad in the afterlife, and that's just, oh man, I'm now going cross-eyed. So many things happening, and so many possibilities, and Jesus Christ! Because I haven't even gotten into the interpersonal drama in this movie. You have the doctor whose wife is mad at him because of the missing kid and kind of blames him for everything. You have the detective that is on the case of the mysterious people dying and that detective is also interested in the doctor. And it's very heavily intimated that her interest is romantic. She wants to take a trip to Dr. Love's Bone Town. But then there's also the couple on the island, and it turns out that they have recently reunited after being separated for a while, and there's a lot of tension between the couple and the girlfriend's best friend. Because as it turns out, the best friend totally fucked her boyfriend. But she doesn't know that yet, and they're trying to keep that from her over the course of this movie. Because as the movie unravels, it turns out the reason why they initially separated is because she lost a kid in childbirth, and then while they were separated, he started sleeping with her best friend, and then her best friend got pregnant, and so they're basically on this trip to tell her that they're gonna break up. Which, by the way, that is a terrible plan. Do not do that. If you're gonna break up, break up at home. Do not do it on some random vacation. Especially not a working vacation in which you are going on this vacation specifically to start a business with your girlfriend. That is the worst time. Do not do that. You suck. But you also get the idea that one of the reasons why all these little kid ghosts are appearing before the girl is because she lost a kid in childbirth so she has a deeper connection to the afterlife of kids. Or is it that? Because there's something else that happens over the course of this movie that complicates that. Remember that thing I said that is deep spoilers? Well, we're about to get into that. So if anything I've said so far has made you want to watch the movie, then stop right here because we're about to spoil the ending ending of this movie. You have been warned and here we go. So over the course of this movie, the Doctor has been getting advice from random people loosely connected to the spiritual world. There's this old schizophrenic lady that tells him that the kid is somewhere all green, and that he's at the bottom of this thing. 
There's the kid's autistic best friend who keeps saying that his friend went and hid inside a submarine. But there's no submarines in Iceland, so that just seems like a useless clue. And there's also this one medium hired by his wife who says that he needs to find the body or the kid's gonna be lost forever. And so, after coming to a dead end at the end of this mystery, he ends up going over the footage of the kid at the gas station. And while he's doing this, the detective comes over, and the detective notices something in the footage. And the thing the detective notices is that, oh shit, those three people are people that were involved in this one incident three years ago. And the three people in the video is the couple and the best friend from Plot B. And that's when you realize that everything that's happening in Plot B happened three years ago. These two storylines aren't happening concurrently, they are a non-linear story. And that's when the doctor and the detective look at the picture of the submarine the autistic kid drew, and they notice not only is it green like the schizophrenic woman said, it looks identical to an old septic tank. And that's when the detective remembers the files from the case of the couple and the best friend on the island. Because while this couple is on this island, the spooky ghost ends up killing two of them, leaving only the girlfriend to live, presumably so the girlfriend could be his mom. Not that she's actually his mom, but so she can join him in the afterlife and become his surrogate mother. Because the other thing they discover is that this island is also the same island the kid went and hit on. And I mean the bullied kid in the past. He went and stowed away on this one boat and then ended up on this abandoned island where he died because he had no food or water or anything. And the girlfriend in the past on the island ends up discovering his body in the basement of one of the houses. And then after she discovers that her best friend and her boyfriend have been cheating on her, the ghost ends up killing both of them and then guiding her to join him inside the basement, which she does and presumably dies and joins him. Flash forward to the Doctor future, and the Doctor ends up discovering that, oh shit, one of those septic tanks was on this island. It's part of the photographs of the case of the missing people on the island. So he goes to the island, and he ends up discovering the septic tank, and they open it up, and sure enough, his kid is in there. He's dead. And as he's walking away with the ghost of his kid, in the window is the ghost of the girlfriend from the past and the little boy that was bullied. And they wave on as the ghost of the kid that was missing joins his family once again. And I just condensed a shit ton of the movie and left out a lot of details, but holy crap is that a lot to take in. But there's a lot about this ending that really confuses me. Were the kids helping each other in the afterlife? Were they friends? At one point, the medium says to the doctor that his kid unleashed this other kid, but it's never really explained how he unleashed him. You can assume he came to this island and then died himself and that awoke the other kid, but it's not really clear how or why. And the kid's apparently killing all his old bullies, but he's also friendly to the doctor? It's just a little confusing to me and a little convoluted, and maybe it all makes sense if I watch it again. But upon an initial viewing, I was left really just, like, utterly confused. I had no idea what the hell I had just watched. But I knew that despite my confusion, I did enjoy the journey. And sometimes that's all that really matters. Oh yeah, and one more thing. When you look back and you realize that, oh, that kid stowed away in their car and then came to the island with them, that means initially they might not have been seeing a ghost at all. It might have just been this kid running around on the island. Which is a really cool twist, and I really enjoyed that part of it. And again, if there's anything about this movie that I am misinterpreting, feel free to correct me below, because I was lost as all hell. Anyway, my fellow Gorehounds, as per usual, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And as always, peace out, and I'll catch y'all later.